Konnichiwa, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to my Japanese Faves series where we'll cover every major type of Japanese food. This lesson is called Kokumi, the sixth taste. You can also take my 104 lesson cooking course called Learning to Cook Like a Pro, One Small Plate at a Time. It starts off easy, gets progressively more difficult, and ends with the ultimate challenge, which is actually five lessons in one. You can also watch my other series, such as Italian Faves, Impress Your Date, Sauces to Die For, Spain on a Small Plate, or bonus lessons, which are things like how to break down a chicken or how to make stock. This lesson is about kokumi. All right. Now, you've probably heard of the five, I'm sorry, the four basic flavors of Western cooking, sweet, salty, bitter, and sour. Okay. You've probably also heard of the fifth taste, which was identified in Japan called umami. I have a separate lesson in my Japanese fave series called What is Umami? Now, recently, the rage has been about kokumi, all right, which some people have called the sixth flavor. Now, we're going to explore in this video whether it really is the sixth flavor or not. And if it isn't, what is it? Okay, Is it the sixth flavor or is it something different? Now, the meaning of the word kokumi in Japanese is loosely translated into English as rich taste or rich or delicious. But the problem is that umami is also sometimes translated as deliciousness. All right. So we're going to talk later on in this video about the difference between kokumi and umami. Now, kokumi has been described in many different ways where the, everyone is trying to get at what it is. Everyone is trying to put into English terms this Japanese food concept. It's been called a sensation that makes things taste better. Right? It's also been, it, it's been said to add richness, roundness, and butteriness. Right? Some, one person said it adds craveability, and another said it enhances the feel of the food in the mouth. Someone else said it provides a satisfying or rich mouthfeel. And someone else said it boosts the mouth coating sensation of food. All right? Yet another person has said it makes things like mushrooms earthier, it makes chicken richer, it makes beef beefier, and it, uh, and it makes broths more complex. Someone else said it makes foods seem more present in the mouth and prolongs the finish. Another one said that it imparts texture and mouth sensation. Yet another one said it delivers background, richness, roundness, and complexity. Now, kokumi, it is said, can be found in things such as uh, uh, shoyu, Japanese soy sauce, or, or any kind of soy sauce. Uh, also in um, uh, fish sauce, okay, which is, uh, is used in Japanese cooking, but it's more often used in Thai cooking or uh, Vietnamese cooking. Also in uh, shrimp paste, which is also more of a creature of Thai cooking than it is Japanese cooking. Also, you can find it in um, uh, marinades that are made with koji. All right? I have a separate lesson on making shio koji, shoyo koji, and amazaki. And uh, this is uh, uh, shoyo koji that I made right here. And uh, this is it's fermented, basically, fermented using koji and uh, soy sauce. Also, uh, amazaki, same thing. This is fermented uh, using uh, rice and um, uh, water. Uh, also, another, uh, another um, uh, thing that's said to have kokumi is mirin, right? Or um, black garlic, okay? But black garlic is a fermented garlic that basically turns black, right? Uh, also, miso, which I've used in many lessons, uh, and um, miso is said to have kokumi. Uh, also, more in the Western realm is uh, cheese, uh, and also um, beer, which we can find really uh, anywhere in the world. So these are things that are said to have uh, kokumi. Also, it's said that aged and slow-cooked foods have kokumi, such as chicken soup or stews or braises, braised foods, things that are cooked low and slow. Uh, and I showed you cheese as an example. Uh, also, there are companies that have created food additives that they say add or uh, add kokumi to uh, foods. Okay. Now, I, this this 
This video is not about additives and it's not about the companies that make the additives. This is about naturally occurring kokumi, a kokumi that occurs naturally in food. It's not about adding, but every now and then I will mention what an, what an additive uh, of kokumi would mean. All right. Now, there's a big but to everything I just showed you. All those examples that I just showed you of things that are said to have kokumi, the problem is that many of these foods, if not maybe all of them, are also often given as common examples of foods that have umami, all right? So, hmm, what does this mean? Does not this mean that kokumi and umami are the same thing? All right, now we're gonna talk about that later on in this video. Now let's talk briefly about the science behind kokumi. Scientists have had kind of a difficult time identifying the cause of kokumi. And by the way, I use that word cause uh, very specifically. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, scientists have said that kokumi is caused by gamma glutamyl peptides that activate calcium receptors in the tongue. Also, it's been associated with uh, glutamate containing dipeptides and tripeptides, also cysteine derivatives and uh, hmm, histidine and protamine. I don't know what any of those things are, okay? But that's what the scientists say. Right? Now, how does kokumi happen, all right? It happens through fermentation, all right? And also it happens through aging of foods. It, all, it happens through slow cooking, and you might argue that it happens through maybe any type of cooking, okay? Maybe any type of cooking of food develops kokumi in the food or develops what you might call kokumi in the food, right? And if you're using kokumi as a food additive, right? Now the additives, by the way, they don't have any taste, right? But when you add them to food, they are said to create kokumi, right? Now, I, I haven't tried any of them. I don't know whether that's really true. Um, but the additives themselves don't have any flavor. They supposedly add kukumi to a, to a dish. Again, we're not talking about additives. We're talking about kukumi that is naturally occurring in foods, and it occurs from fermentation, aging, slow cooking, and maybe any type of cooking, right? Now, my view of kukumi is that there's kind of a difference between how we would view it in the United States and how it would be viewed in, or how it is viewed in Japan. It's very new concept to the United States, but there's a basic difference, I think, in how it will be described here and how it has been described here versus how it is probably described by Japanese people who, uh, who grew up in Japan and who speak Japanese as their first language. Americans, I think, are more likely to say, I taste this or that, I taste salt, I taste sourness, I taste kokumi, right? Japanese, I think, are more likely to say, now they may say that, okay, they may say that, but I think they're more likely to say that this food has kokumi. This food has kokumi, right? So they're talking about kokumi as a quality separate from tasting it, okay? Now, this is partly a matter of semantics, all right? It's also partly a matter of translation from Japanese into English. It's also partly a difference of culture, and that's, all, that's kind of mostly what I'm talking about here, and it's also a difference in philosophy, okay? So, um, my view is that kokumi is a sen sensation. It is not a taste, all right? It doesn't provide texture, it is texture. Occurring naturally, it's not a flavor enhancer. It is the enhanced flavor of the food. Right? And as an additive though, as a food additive, it's a flavor enhancer. Remember, the additives are flavorless, but when they are added, they enhance flavor. So really what I'm saying is that kokumi is an effect, not a cause, right? So roundness, is what you experience, okay? Kokumi doesn't give roundness. Kokumi is what you experience. Kokumi is what you taste when you taste roundness, all right? So you don't add kokumi to something. You um, call the roundness kokumi. So it doesn't make mushrooms earthier, doesn't make chicken richer, it doesn't make beef beefier, doesn't make broths more complex. Kokumi is what you call that earthiness or that chickeniness or that meatiness or beefiness or that complexity, right? 
and it doesn't impart, doesn't impart enhanced texture or mouthfeel. It is the intent enhanced texture or mouthfeel. Now, I'm showing you up on the screen a slide that is, um, uh, uh, it contains some of the things that I had on an earlier slide. So I can kind of drive this point home. Now you, you might think I'm kind of beating a dead horse here, but uh, this I think is a difficult concept to, to grasp, especially when we get to the question of how it differs from umami, all right? So, so what I'm doing here is I'm doing kind of a comparison. Uh, on, the one, on the left, we're talking about what Kukami doesn't do. Uh, I'm sorry, Kokumi. What Kokumi doesn't do or what it isn't, all right? So it doesn't add richness, roundness, or bitter, butteriness. It is the richness, the roundness, or the butteriness. It doesn't enhance the feel of foods in the mouth. It is the enhanced mouthfeel. It doesn't provide a satisfying or rich mouthfeel. It is the rich mouthfeel. It doesn't booth mouth coating sensation of foods. It is the mouth coating. So kind of to bring this all together, Umami is a basic flavor. I translate umami as yumminess. You can watch my separate video on what is umami to hear more about that. Broadly speaking, umami can be viewed as the conglomeration of flavors other than the basic four flavors. But I think an argument can be made, and I, make, and I say this in my, in my separate video, that maybe umami is the rest of the taste, the rest of the taste beyond the four basic flavors. Now, Kokumi, on the other hand, is the experience. It's the experience of richness and complexity and body, right? Occurring naturally, it is what to call, it's what to call enhanced umami, sweetness, saltiness, sourness, or bitterness. Now, let's talk about the difference between umami and kokumi. Umami has also, or also is described as deliciousness or richness, right? So are they the same thing uh, or is kokumi enhanced umami, right? Maybe they're the same thing. Maybe they're different. You could just as easily say this food has umami or you could say this food has kokumi. And after fermenting or, or uh, adding a fermented uh, ingredient, uh, or after slow cooking, or after aging, maybe you could say this food has kokumi, but you could also say this food has umami, or this food has more umami, right? So did it not have kokumi before being enhanced, before the, the flavor of the food was enhanced? Did it not have any kokumi? Well, did it just have less kokumi and then it had, uh, or was it less umami or was it both, right? It's confusing. I know it's confusing. And, and, and I'm trying to make it a little less confusing, but I believe that unless you grow up in Japan, it is very difficult as a practical matter to distinguish between umami and kokumi or to distinguish when you are properly using the word umami versus properly using the word kokumi. I think it's very difficult to do unless you're a native Japanese person. So I think the best way to understand the difference, okay, is to think of umami as a taste and to think of kokumi as an effect, an effect of fermentation or cooking or aging. Think of kokumi as an intensification of flavor. So it's not like saying, so when you say, I taste umami, you could be saying, I taste salt, or I taste sourness, or I taste bitterness. But when we talk about kukumi, it's kind of more analogous to saying, this is hot, or this is cold, okay? It's different from identifying a taste. It's a, more of an identifying, identification of an effect, all right? Which is, and that effect is the intensification of flavor. Now, when you're talking about an additive again, it's adding, uh, uh, it's enhancing one of the four, one of the five flavors by adding the uh, the food additive, right? So my conclusion is that kokumi is not the sixth flavor, and it is not a flavor enhancer. Putting aside that uh, that food additive, right? What it is is what you call 
enhanced flavor. So I hope this video has helped you to understand Kokumi. I hope that it has helped you to understand the difference between umami and kukumi. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.